Welcome one and all to a brand new series I'm starting up here on the Milo channel called Lens of Truth. In this series, I'll be breaking down all things Ocarina of Time. We'll be taking a detailed look at the story, dungeons, towns, minigames, game mechanics, and way more that Ocarina of Time has to offer. So, if you're interested to see more after this video concludes, do consider subscribing to stay tuned. This is going to be a long series spanning many months, and even I don't know the exact number of videos it's going to take for me to cover everything I deem necessary. So, without further ado, let's take a look at Kokiri Forest through the lens of truth. Starting up a brand new file in Ocarina of Time is always a treat for me. There are so many bright moments of the game I always look forward to running through once again, and many of my favorite bosses and temples from the Zelda series as a whole come from this game. But before we can get into any of that, we of course need to start this story from the very beginning. We kick off this game with a quick nightmare from our main character Link about some random girl riding out of the castle on horseback with an older lady, as well as this tall, dark, and handsome man clad in black armor emerging from the castle gate, confronting Link face to face. After this dream sequence, we're shown the great Deku Tree, who reveals that there is a great evil falling upon the land. He sends out the fairy Navi to accompany Link and bring him over to meet the Deku Tree in person. This is where we start our adventure. Good old Kokiri Forest. This little village is a fantastic little tutorial area to kick the game off, and I can't wait to get into all the little things it does to help the player along their journey. First things first, we're greeted upon leaving Link's house by his Kokiri friend Saria. She congratulates us on having finally gotten our own fairy companion, and tells us that being summoned by the Great Deku Tree is a big deal and we should go right away. Once we reach the path to the Great Deku Tree though, we're stopped in our tracks by Mido, the village idiot. He tells us that it's too dangerous to continue through here without both a sword and a shield, and immediately we're given a new objective objective to achieve before we can follow the quest we're already on. Given the Kokiri shop is located right next to Mido, it's pretty easy to wander in there and find that there's a shield on sale for only 40 rupees. No matter how you navigate through the Kokiri forest, it's basically guaranteed that you'll come across at least 40 rupees without even thinking about it, so having a price that you'll need to return to being as low as it is, is just a great introduction to the way that shopping goes in this game. Straight out of the shop we have a little tutorial on how jumping works. Run up to a ledge and keep holding forward and there you go, you're a jumping master already. Jumping across these stones will give you 5 rupees as well, kickstarting your funds to buy the shield that you need so badly. Arriving at the end of these stones, there's a Kokiri boy nearby trying to pick up some rocks, serving as a tutorial to picking up objects off the ground. Picking up and throwing these rocks will break them and yield a decent number of rupees as well. From here, if you move up this hill right in front of you, there will be a small house and a fenced area. The house here belongs to the know-it-all brothers, and once you enter it, there are three boys you can talk to about many of your different menu options. Everything in your start menu will be covered head to toe in explanation here, leaving no room for confusion. Exiting the house and exploring this fenced area will lead you through a series of signs all giving explanations of the different ways you can use your sword in this game. Funny enough though, we don't have a sword yet. The last thing you'll find within this fenced area is a small hole in the wall with a sign next to it teaching you that you can crawl through. Following this path on the other side of this wall of course leads us to our very own Kokiri sword, which we can equip and try out all these nifty sword tutorials right outside the area we found it. At this point, it's most likely we'll have collected enough rupees to buy our wooden shield from the shop, and if we haven't, well, just jump over these rocks a few times and they'll never stop giving you that sweet 5 rupee bonus for making it across. Equipped now with our sword and shield, we're able to get past a disgruntled Mido in order to make it to the Great Deku Tree, but along this path we find our first enemies. These plant enemies are harmless for now, serving as targets for us to put our blade to the test, and they even reward us with our first C button assignable item, the Deku Stick. These aren't exactly useful now, but they will be very soon. And at last, we've reached the Deku Tree. The Deku Tree welcomes us and tells us that he knows about the nightmares that we've been having. As evil prevails throughout the land, people with gentle hearts and noble spirits are able to sense it, explaining why Link has had such trouble sleeping as of late. Well, that and the fact that once he does get a bit of rest, he gets woken up by an annoying fairy yelling at him. He tells us that he's been cursed by this evil, and as a test to our courage, he asks us to wander inside of him to dispel the curse ourselves. The Great Deku Tree will be the first dungeon to kick off our fantastical adventure, and will serve as a topic of conversation for the second video in this series. Kokiri Forest, as a whole, is a great tutorial area. Once you're taught everything about the controls of the game as you follow what is basically a straight path from one tutorial to the next is just such good design. Mido stops you from getting to the tree without a sword and shield, the shop next to him has a shield for sale you'll need to save up for, the jumping tutorial sits right beside the shop, an item pickup tutorial lies straight ahead of where you were from the jumping tutorial, and 
from there, you're right next to the hill that takes you to all the menu explanations and tells you how to use your sword, by which point you'll most likely have connected enough rupees to buy the shield already. This is a great way to design a tutorial area in my opinion. None of these characters or signs are forced upon you if you don't want to read what they have to say rather than just trying things out for yourself, but if you do, you'll basically be brought along this path of curiosities leading from one learning experience to the next. Aside from just the tutorial stuff though, there's also a few fun things that you can do in Kokiri Forest before you head out to the Great Daegu Tree. We've already talked about the infinite rupees to be gained from this jumping section, but you could also explore the Lost Woods for a while, or go into Mido's house and steal all his shit after he was so mean to you. You can climb up the back of Saria's house and wander over these bridges for a reward of 5 rupees, and there's even a guide on how to enter the first person view in order to take a look at the whole village from a point of view that you now have up on this tall pillar. Kokiri Forest has always stood out to me for all of these reasons as a perfect introductory level for a game like Ocarina of Time. When this game was released, it introduced many people to what it was like to play through an adventure action game in a world whose scale was unmatched at the time. Having a good tutorial area in a game like this in the year that it was released is extremely important, and I think it holds up beautifully. There are plenty of ways that the game teaches the player to play, whether you're reading the dialogue or just testing out your controls within this safe environment they've set up, and I just think it's wonderful. If you like this video and would like to see more like this in the future, you're definitely going to want to subscribe to my channel to stay tuned. Ocarina of Time is not only my favorite Zelda game of all time, but quite possibly my favorite video game of all time, and I can't wait to talk about every single little thing that this game has to offer. This series is something I am happy to commit to, but if you've been around for a while and are worried about the series taking away from the regular content I post most often, don't worry about it. I'll be releasing more of my regular content between Lens of Truth uploads all the time. To get this series off the ground though, I will be doing the Deku Tree Dungeon episode next Friday, but the Friday after that will be another video of my regularly scheduled programming. I just hope you all enjoy whatever it is you like to watch from this channel. Until next Friday though, that's my time. Do consider subscribing to the channel or even just clicking one of the videos you see on screen now if you're looking for more content from yours truly. As for now though, my name's Milo, and I'm out.